Hello chess friends and welcome to Azarov's chess channel and welcome to my hyper accelerated Dragon Sicilian defense series. So in this series we are following a very nice and effective weapon while playing against e4 so this is now our preparation while playing as black as I mentioned in my previous videos I have uh, covered also some good uh, I think a good opening theory while playing as uh, black uh, against d4 so you can check out my Nimtso Indian defense and also my King's Indian defense so we're continuing now to battle against e4 so e4 is sometimes also uh, I had my troubles while playing against e4 so that's why I try to find a very nice and effective system so I think uh, this hyper accelerated Dragon Sicilian defense it's a nice uh, opening which you can try it's a very aggressive and it's, i think it's also very easy to learn so in order to be get a better understanding of this particular line please watch my um, series from the beginnings because i've explained also so many many lines i think in the series we will have at least like 30 or even more uh, videos so you can have all of these possible lines covered Although I'm trying to cover all of this, um, uh, all of this line, still you have to make your own preparations. But I wanted to show you first this uh, strategical ideas of this particular lines. Then you have a better understanding of white's possibilities, and then you can maybe try some sidelines to learn uh, for yourself. But uh, today we're continuing with this uh, H4 line of the hyper accelerated Dragon Sicilian defense. It's this uh, early flank attack. It's uh, sort of a, uh, it's called this Chinese system. And uh, basically, it seems that uh, White has a good attack here, but there is there are this uh, defensive setup. Uh, there is this defense setup that I want to show you today, which you can apply and get out of this uh, mess in an early stage of the game. So let's see this uh, early flank attack and how you should play uh, against these types of setups of White. So here, e4, we are continuing to follow our uh, hyper accelerated with c5, knight on f3, and now g6. So the line that I want to, wanted to show you today is this H4 line. It's a common idea, uh, like in the Dragon uh, Sicilian, the common Dragon Sicilian, the, in the so-called Yugoslav attack, to create this early flank attack uh, of, uh, uh, of with the move H4, H5, uh, something like D4, and then trying to uh, uh, trade off the stocks with bishops and trade uh, try also a very very dangerous attack through the h file but here my recommendation is simply to go knight on f6 uh, preventing this h5 idea you'll see many times uh, that white will try the h5 move anyway but it's basically a mistake it seems that you cannot take uh, because then rook takes on h5 uh, leads into a very very aggressive line but simply g takes h5 uh, you have some troubles here you have a weak h7 and weak f7 square but it's not a problem uh, you have to play just the next moves i think very accurate then you have a completely uh, winning mill game i think here after knight on g5 attacking this h5 my recommendation is play to play uh, simply e6 and if d4 then simply take after queen takes on d4 here we have uh, rook on g8 and with the possibility to play bishop on g7 you can leave this pawn hanging but now bishop on g7 i think leads into a very very comfortable game here for black with the preparation to play knight on c6 we can also try d5 creating a pawn breakthrough we can also maybe play much more actively with our queen getting sneaking in a little bit here in the defense uh, one of the ideas can be that your opponent will try here queen on h5 uh, attacking this f7 but now this e6 move is very important <coughs> in this um, a sacrificing line now queen on f6 simply defending and the tries of course to trade off the queen so with the queen on g6 if your opponent tries knight on c3 uh, there is uh, one thing to realize here the idea of white is then to play knight on d5 uh, but it's not possible you see this e6 move is important uh, in this sacrificing line if knight on g5 then we you can always met this move with uh, knight on a6 then you're preventing this knight on c7 outpost you you can stay here with the king in the center in the continuation queen on g6 if your opponent tries queen on h4 uh, to stay with the uh, queens on the board then bishop on e7 here f4 can be played but now h6 i think it's a good line here after knight on b5 as said you can play knight on a6 and you have solved the problems in the continuation you can try rook on g8 and uh, as i said i don't think that you have to worry so much about this particular line so let's see now the possible continuation after um, if your opponent tries to move e5 so 
did sort of a move that uh, gains a tempo for, for white but uh, here you should simply continue knight on uh, g5 uh, g4 attacking the pawn and now you, your opponent can try here the move d4 if your opponent tries uh, to play the move uh, h4 h5 immediately then you simply play uh, bishop on uh, g7 attacking this uh, pawn on uh, e5 twice and if h takes g6 you see after a takes g6 you have again solve the problems on the h file and still this uh, weakness of, uh, of whites on this e5 stays you can try of course uh, white can try here the move immediately d4 but you can simply take it out and after queen takes on d4 uh, attacking the knight we have a very very important move the move d6 if your opponent tries here bishop on b5 you can simply continue with knight on c6 after bishop on f4 we have bishop on d7 then after bishop takes on uh, bishop takes on c6 we can take here with the pawn on c6 and we have again solved the problems the idea in the next move is to play queen on a5 and then really really challenging uh, this uh, pawn on e5 so the pin stays here we have the bishop pair we have we can stay here with the king in the center don't be don't be worried uh, so much about this uh, king in the center position because it's not so easy for white to castle also after castling i hope you realize rook on b8 is also a very very powerful threat as i said with the bishop pair i think it's again a comfortable game so uh here um let's see after this move e5 knight on g4 the potential d4 immediately then again bishop on g7 uh, not it's a similar line now to this one that i've explained so far here if your opponent tries uh, d takes c5 it's not so, such a good move because we can simply take this pawn and uh, this pawn will be a weakness after uh, knight takes on e5 we have bishop takes on e5 and the threat now of course is to play here queen on a5 and take out this uh, take out this pawn on c5 although white has the pawn majority here on the queen side it's uh, not something that you have to worry so much we can play really simply healthy chess as i would like to say simply development castling uh, d6 and similar ideas break this pawn maybe attack this pawn uh, even further and uh, here i hope you realize we have a perfect uh, activity here with the bishop so after uh, the move d4 as said bishop on g7 here opponent uh, can try this h5 as i said but your opponent can also uh, try this knight on c3 idea it's again not a problem uh, we can simply take c takes uh, d4 and again and after queen takes on d4 again this very important d6 move uh, let's go again back uh, here uh, after e5 after knight on g5 we can try something from white's perspective uh, to play maybe uh, here immediately d4 uh, after bishop on g7 now uh, again maybe white has this uh, pro uh, possibilities to play knight on g5 attacking your knight uh, which is also a very very important line uh, to memorize for you attacking immediately the knight but here my recommendation is simply to play h5 and uh, simply continue uh, to s support your knight if f3 then knight on h6 again another problem in the continuation here i wanted to show you a very instructive game in this particular line it was a different move order but again uh, with uh, after the move knight on g5 here you can support this knight with h5 and your if your opponent tries bishop on c4 you can simply cast me so the instructive game in this particular line that i wanted to show you it's a game played by uh, adam horvat against boris uh, boris uh, chatel balshev again you see we have already challenged uh white center with the c takes d4 possibility and uh, here after bishop on c4 of course we want to support here this uh, f7 here uh, if your opponent tries c3 then d5 is very important kicking away the bishop if the position in, in the in the center clears here after uh, uh, e takes d uh, d6 then again e takes d6 with the possibility to play queen on e7 and similar ideas we can again try this d5 move i think this is again a comfortable line for you so uh, in the game uh, bishop on e2 was played by white uh, challenging this knight but ma now knight on c6 simply challenging now this uh, d4 weakness uh, here we have e6 by white trying uh, to cut off this connection between uh, the bishop and, and the knight but now a very important move f5 uh, supporting if bishop takes on g4 then f takes g4 opening the f file 
this Nighton, uh, the Nighton F7 idea is not something that you have to worry so much because we can try Queen on C7 and then take out this weak E6 pawn. So uh, again, I don't think that uh, you have here so so many troubles in the continuation after F5. Uh, here uh, the takes c5 was played but now d4 here by black uh, finally opening the position for the dark square bishop also not allowing this knight to jump on a very active square here on c3 because uh, white has made this mistake of c3 it's a little bit um, lacking of development now from black, from white's perspective in the continuation uh, casting was played and now queen on d5 you see how important uh, this move was uh, to liberate now the queen the queen has a now perfect uh, control in the center we can in, in the next move take out this pawn and this e6 weakness is always present here in the continuation of the game so here c4 was played queen on c5 we have knight on d2 and now knight on uh, e5 also a very nice coordination here with our knight still with the possibility again to attack this uh, weak uh, e6 pawn in the game knight on b3 but not a problem queen on c7 we have knight takes on d4 but now knight takes on c4 so see it's also not uh, uh, easy for white to um, to protect all of these weaknesses because uh, the bishop's activity is a huge one the queen is now on a very nice square we have still possibilities to maybe open even the uh, light square diagonal in the game knight on f3 was played and now rook on d8 very important move uh, creating a pin here we have knight on uh, b5 but now queen on b6 we have uh, queen on uh, c c2 but now first a6 counter attack queen takes and now uh, uh, a takes b5 queen takes on b5 queen takes on b5 after bishop takes on b5 now finally here bishop on e6 and you see now uh, we are having a very nice activity with these two long range bishops we have a pawn majority here a 4 and 3 situation again uh, white is lacking of development because it's hard for white to de develop this uh, dark square bishop because then b2 is hanging we have already attacked this a2 pawn then the continuation a4 was played but now bishop on d5 a very important centralization move a5 now bishop takes on f3 g takes f3 and now knight on e5 uh, you see i'm not going to show you the whole game um, because i hope you realize that the all of these pawns of whites are uh, too weak and i'm going to show you this game to the end in the description below so you can analyze it for yourself but if you, although white has the bishop pair it's again i'm pointing out very hard to uh, develop this uh, dark square bishop to connect the rooks uh, here the a5 uh, pawn is a weakness this b2 is also a weakness here very important h4 weakness f3 weakness so too much to handle here for white so let's go back as i said here very very important uh, after the move h4 First of all, knight on f6, very important. After the move uh, of d4, we have uh, here really also maybe c takes, uh, uh, c takes d4, or you can immediately take the uh, pawn on e4. So that's why your opponent in most of the times will play the move e5, then very important move knight on g4. So attacking here this pawn on e5, bishop on g7 is the idea to attack it, and then after that with potential h5, supporting the knight we want to stay with our knight as much as we can here on the fourth rank because on the fourth rank this knight has a very nice activity so as i said i don't think that this h4 line uh, is so much um, that you have to worry about i've played many many times uh, against this variation i think i have a good success so as i said here after h h5 it seems that uh, your opponent has attacked you but now bishop on g7 here not a problem still the weakness on e5 remains and i think as i said you have a very very uh, comfortable game so okay i hope you realize these ideas we are continuing with our hyper accelerated rank Sicilian defense with some more lines with some more opening preparations uh, meanwhile you can watch my uh, hyper accelerated rank Sicilian defense from the beginning here is my here is the link to the introduction and uh, all of this possible lines that i have covered so far and you can also watch my king's indian and nimzo indian defense series in which i'm showing you a very nice and effective weapon while playing against d4 and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course